Welcome to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. Sporting in on the right hand side of the map in the color orange. It's 3DB and we're actually very lucky to be casting this game today because usually B has his match history closed which means we can't often cast many of his games but I think he, I think he may have accidentally left it on or off sorry. So yeah we're going to be casting this one today. So playing as the Marlians here going to be opening up with the uh, five villagers on the straggler tree going to be going for the houses. And we are on the map wetlands, so maybe we do see uh, B move out onto some shoreline fish. It's commonly the thing we see on this map. Sometimes we do even see a dock. If you're if you're a madman like Salami, he loves to dock up this map. But spawning on the left-hand side of the map in the color pink, it's going to be a player that I don't know how to pronounce. Or even say, I, I have no clue what that means. So uh, we're going to be calling them pink. And they're going to be playing as the French today. French? Not a very good... Civ matchup up against the Marlians. However, this Civ on this map is very nice because something a lot of people overlook with the French is they've got half price drop off buildings, which means you can move on to these shoreline fish very, very easily, especially this one. This one's super close to the base. It'll be very easy for, for Pink to just pull these villagers, drop down a, a mill, and we can see like you've got wood in the bank right now. You have to get that age up in a little bit faster. If you do go out to these shoreline fish, I mean, that's 1,500 food right there up for grabs. But looks like Pink isn't going to be doing that for the time being. And neither is B. B's actually got a really, really, really nice spawn here with this uh, with this pond right here. Because this isn't supposed to happen. This is a bug. This is meant to be two separate ponds, but they've somewhere in the in the code been, been put together. So this is actually unintended and uh, can be pretty nice for B. Because usually, if you've got three fish in a pond, you don't really want to be docking up because a lot of the time, one of the fish will disappear anyway. So, you know, you don't want to be going a dock for, for two shoreline fish. But in this case, you know, you could stick one here. Sure, you'd be losing two shoreline fish here, but that's still four in here. That would be totally worth a dock. You only need a couple fishing boats, but that's totally worth it. But we'll have to see if B looks to, to do that a little, a little bit later on. But for the time being... Pink is going to be aging up with a squad of cavalry, as expected. You know, I'm really looking forward to the Season 4 changes with the uh, landmarks. For those that don't know, in Season 4, they've said we'll be getting landmark improvements. So I'm hoping that'll mean Chamber of Commerce reworks. I mean, can we just get rid of the landmark and just get a new one? Can we just get, like, a completely new landmark? How cool would that be? I, th I think that would be pretty awesome, but... We'll have to see what they decide to do, but Pink is going to be moving out now onto the shoreline fish, and this is exactly what I mean. He could have done this a little bit earlier on, and looks like he's only going to have the one villager there for the time being. And does actually do this because now he can make uh, he can get wheelbarrow from this mill. So really smart move there, getting the wheelbarrow in there. And he may as well build the mill here, and you know at that point he may as well send these bills out. But doesn't decide to do that for the time being. You see, B is going to be edging up as well. Sahara and Trade Network is going to be placed here on top of the pit mine. So probably going to be seeing a fast castle out of B here. I mean, this is really the meta that we've been seeing a lot with the with the Malians. And we're going to have to see if he looks to extract some of the shoreline fish. The fastest gathering speed for villagers. Obviously, they can't reach deep sea fish. But uh, yeah, so we're going to have to see if he looks to use that. But actually decides to go for a mill. This is interesting from B. Because because cows gather the same rate as a boar. A very, very efficient food source. But they still cost quite a bit. I mean, in the most recent patch, they got nerfed slightly. Oh, they got they got buffed, then they got nerfed, but they're still technically buffed from the original. Obviously, they were a hundred, then it went down to 75, now it's up to 90. And I mean, that's still expensive for for 500 food when you've got this behind your base. So I'm really surprised to see from from B that it will be going for cattle. But maybe this is just for the wheelbarrow. Maybe it's just for the wheelbarrow and it looks to move villagers onto the shoreline fish. But by the positioning of this mill, I, I think it's going to be for the cattle. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. And we can see Pink over here. He's going to have all of the shoreline fish right here. I really like what he's how he's doing that right there. And the first night is going to be coming out soon as well. Villager's going to be moved out onto the gold here. Uh, interestingly to see that he's not going to be going for this one. Is this one closer? It looks slightly close. It looks about the same. 
not not exactly sure as to why he decided to go for this one. Cancels the the mining camp right. Was, did, was he building a lumber camp or something? This feels a little bit indecisive from Pink. I don't think he knows exactly what he wants to. Do. Oh, he thought it was gold. He thought it was stone. Sorry. Oh, that is that is a bit of an error right there by by Pink, and that, that is quite unfortunate. He thought this was the stone. Okay, but does realize that now he's going to be moving out into the stone, but. It's caused quite a bit of a delay there. His second town center is going to be coming down a little bit later than it should. But not shouldn't be too much of, a, of an issue. And we see that the knight is going to be looking for some, some kills. And maybe this is why B doesn't look to move out onto the shoreline fish. Despite being able to get up some really nice easy walls here for the shoreline fish. It's just going to be sticking in base for the cattle. And I guess it does make sense to, to stick to the cattle. I mean, you could be a little bit more efficient with the shoreline fish, but... I guess you're nice and safe underneath the town center here. So I guess that makes sense. We see archery range going to be dropped down behind this as well for B. Interesting to see because usually with this fast castle strategy, we don't see much pro or any production because of the Ferimba garrison. It's just such an effective landmark that that Ferimba garrison. And it means you don't really need much other production. So we're going to have to see what B looks to do with this archery range. We see Pink just having a look around the entire base right now. He, he's looking for a villager kill. Knight going to be running in. B should realize this and stick them inside of the, the Saharan trade network. One villager might be going down here if he's not careful. All the villagers do hop inside of that landmark right now. And Pink is going to be, be running back. Does get a nice charge off onto that villager though. It's going to be it's going to be one hit. So B might want to pull this one back to the town center. And pull another one out. But looks like he's just going to be keeping it there for the time being. Pink at the moment just camping. Camping these shoreline fish. Making sure that B can't get to this. We see more cattle coming out as well. B, not too far off the age up now. But at the same time, second town center is going to be coming down from pink. We see nice positioning here. Really, uh, I mean, look at all the wood over here. Really easy to defend this landmark. Uh, or not this landmark, this town center. I mean, look at, look at the wood line he's got. Pretty crazy stuff right there. So pretty nice positioning on this town center. Got a lot of deer here, but we're going to have to see what's, what B decides to do about this. We see Blacksmith going to be dropped down now as well. Archery range has been used for a singular javelin thrower. I'm really not sure as to why he's built that. But he has, so maybe. I mean, it's, it's got to be the Frimber Garrison. It's got to be, right? Yeah, there it is. The Frimber Garrison now going to be dropped down. Ten villagers on that landmark right there. He's wanting to get this landmark up very, very quickly. So, I mean, this age up's coming down a little bit later than we commonly see. I mean, usually we can get this up 30 seconds before this, but uh, obviously building the archery range and the, the blacksmith before the age up is going to delay some things. And you can always find efficiencies here and there with, without, you know, getting more sheep. You don't have to train as much cattle. So small things like that can affect your age up, but still pretty decent timing here for B. Rumba Garrison is going to be the way. And uh, is it going to be for some Musofari warriors? Because that, that is the common the common thing that we see with this build is mass Musofari warriors. And it works really well up against the French as well. Because they love to go for their knights. And knights get absolutely crushed by Musofari warriors. Just because of how cost effective they are. You can get it. You can, they not only counter heavy units. But yeah, they're, they're super cheap. They train super quickly. It's just really, really nice for the Marlians. But it looks like B wanting to go for archers. Why archers? Interesting. I mean, when your opponent is making royal knights, my thought is not, hmm, I'm going to make some archers. So B's got to have something up his sleeve here. We can see the veterancy upgrades going to be coming through on that uh, on that archery range. So they're not going to be uh, not going to be getting that from the from the garrison. I mean. It does take more time than it than it usually would. We can see here, they do take the same amount of time in the archery range as the Fremba Garrison. So maybe it's for time efficiencies, but we've got even more archers coming through. This is really interesting to see. And Pink's reaction is just going to be to wall up. I think he, he thinks a huge push is on the way. And that is probably going to be the case. So I, I like the fact that he's walling up. I mean, maybe you could have got a wall up here. The shoreline fish would have been nice, but not going to be the end of the world. But archers coming out from Pink now as well. So really interesting to see is more archers. Beast is going ham with the archers right now. Do we have poisoned arrows coming in? That is not poisoned arrows. Where is poisoned? It's in here, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the archery range. 500 gold right there. And I mean, 
he's floating quite a bit of gold. I mean, maybe, maybe that is the case. We can see that balanced projectile is going to be coming in as well. More gold does get spent on the, the archers right there. I, I mean, poisoned arrows does... It, it does all right against uh, against knights. You can see here, javelin thrower might get taken out there. Royal knights are about. It's just more and more archers coming out from B. Do we, uh, do we have any sort of Donzo from him? I mean, you know, even like one. One lot of Donzo could be pretty nice here. But for the time being, it's just mass archer. And at this with, with this sort of mass, you're fine up against age two royal knights. They're, they're not a big deal. You've got you've got veterancy upgrades on these archers, and you've got plus two attack, and now you're getting iron under mesh as well. They're gonna be doing a lot of damage towards these royal knights. And we can see Pink's reaction is just to stick it out in age two here. He's got more royal knights out, so B does need to be careful. I mean, this this is a large amount of royal knights. Five royal knights could be enough to wipe this out, especially with these archers here to help as well. But it looks like for the time being, he's going to pull back. 20 archers is a large mass from B. Pink is going to have to be careful. We've got more stables being dropped down as well. We see quite a villager lead starting to build for Pink. He just needs to, to play it out as long as he can. He needs to get that villager lead, but more and more archers are making their way. Pink can look to engage now. He's got a large mass of royal knights. We can see these archers aren't enough to do that much damage. We can see taking out the first royal knight there. But these archers plus knights is just really good here for B. But so much damage comes through from these veteran from these veterancy upgraded archers. Look at the amount of damage they do. This is not a fight that I thought Pink uh, that I thought B could take. But it very clearly is. The amount of damage going through onto those royal knights. They almost get two shot right there. And these these archers don't even have poisoned arrows. This is this is crazy stuff from B right now. It's just pure archer. And once once poisoned arrows is in, that's when things start to get crazy for these guys as well. And villager's going to be starting to be lost now for Pink. The only the only lead that he's got at the moment is the villager lead, and this is not what he wants to be losing. And a big factor for for Pink losing a lot of that fight is because he he I, I think he so he did have iron under mesh in. So that's that. Yeah, we can see how much damage those archers do. It's crazy. I mean, you definitely need to be in age three to, to deal with this, it seems. But a large mass of archers for pink is here. And these royal knights are buying time for those archers to, to get lots of shots off. But it, I don't think it's enough. You can see how much, how quickly these archers just take out those knights. And these are hefty. That, that's a hefty investment to be losing. 240 gold each. You're losing right, uh, two, uh, well, 240 resources, 100 of that being gold, you're losing. B, in such good position. And if we actually take a look at these archers, it's 320 gold for five of these. And it only takes 22 seconds. Crazy, crazy stuff. And B's still grabbing all of his upgrades is in, uh, in as well. He's got, he's going to have plus two armor, ranged armor on this. Which means it's going to be really tricky for Pink to, to try and do an archer war here. This, this isn't looking too good for pink at all. I mean, this isn't what you, you would think at all. Going only archers up against the French is something that I never thought would work, but clearly worked. And now Poisoned Arrows is in. This is where it's going to be really tricky for pink to try and deal with this. That villager is going to be going down. We can see that. Look at all the poisons being stacked onto it. And we, there, it, there it goes. It goes down. And pink just doesn't have an, um, enough of a mass. We can see so much so much damage being put onto the, those guys with the poison effect as well it just means that these archers can trade so effectively and look targeting down the arch the uh, the villagers first as well you can see bees only only 11 villagers behind at this point in time monastery coming down double monastery gonna be picking up all of those relics as well gonna be starting to even up that that income per minute as well and the royal knights just really don't stand much of a chance despite the bigger mass here for pink that's not going to be a favorable fight at all. We can see the poisoned arrows just doing so much damage right there. The mass, the, the mass archers right now coming out from B is crazy. You know, he could have mixed in a couple of Donzo in there and that fight would have been even better. But decides to just go for the mass archers. And this could be game changing right here for Pink. I mean, that, that's that's a lot of his economy right here. That might be caught off guard. 15 villagers here on the shoreline fish. That's his main food economy right now. If we flip this over, you can see 39 villagers are in food. That's like a third of his food economy right there. And it's going to be caught out. And so many archers are making their way down. Those villagers are going to be toast. 
they've got nowhere to run soon behind this beast picking up so many relics behind this floating a ton of wood as well but they're just going to be trying to run back but they're going to be running right into the archers b b doesn't notice it though that's huge for pink he's is he going to be able to run those home i'm not exactly sure what they're up to at the moment yeah okay so gets so so lucky there b wasn't paying attention but massive 30 archers right here and and pink trying to trying to age up we can see 1200 food he needs a little bit more gold age up is definitely what he needs right here but this could be the perfect timing for b let's check if he's got siege engineering in no siege engineering in yet no sort of siege workshop down for the time being but if siege engineering comes through and ram starts to make their way onto the field that could be that could be it for pink but gonna be losing out more villagers he didn't learn his lesson he didn't learn his lesson and now b is gonna be killing all of them tower gonna get denied as well royal institute coming down from pink definitely what he need he needs that that royal bloodlines with a with a good mass of knights but that's gonna cost a lot of time we can see pink has no gold in the bank whatsoever for those upgrades you can see moving out and out onto that 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 northern gold wants to gather from these ones first before he gets these uh these other ones it looks like pink is going to be able to keep b away for the time being we need to keep an eye on any sort of siege engineering coming through from b because he's not going to be able to do that much damage in the base with these with these archers because when there's town center fire there as well defenders advantage it's going to be quite tricky for b to do much damage with only archers the age up going to be coming through very shortly lots of lots and lots of gold being stacked up he needs to get through that veteran C upgrade. He also needs to get through Royal Bloodlines as quickly as he can and mass up as many knights as possible because that's really the only chance he's got. 60 archers now for B. I mean, it's crazy how quickly he can mass this up. More villagers going to get caught off guard now. So, uh, I almost said Salami. I mean, this, this is the sort of strategy Salami would be doing, that's for sure. Pink definitely doesn't want to be losing any knights at this stage. We can see. We do have veteran C upgrades coming through. We've got veteran C, uh, veteran C archers. Also got wedge rivets. Definitely import an important upgrade right there. Going to be reducing the damage from all of these archers by one with that upgrade. It's a crucial, crucial upgrade. But the mass just keeps on growing for B. This really is the archer only, uh, archer only strategy. And behind this, we can actually hear still production of those cows. That's his whole food economy right now for B. And we see only nine villagers on the food. It's all he needs to sustain villager production. And 37 on the gold. And B just going to be running through the base right now. He's just going to be killing as much stuff as he possibly can. We've got 15 archers inside of that town center. We see the knights going to be chasing away any sort of reinforcements. That one javelin thrower is still alive as well. And we see that's so many villagers. 25 villagers right there that is that's almost half of pink's economy being chased right now by 60 50 50 archers nice quick wall coming through from from pink that doesn't mean he's going to be able to save the majority of his villagers but more villagers over here as well so much of his economy's over here you do not want to be luring b over here but that's exactly what he's doing he needs to, he needs to clean up this this army but all of all of pink's knights at the moment are in the base of B trying to clean up these archers underneath town center fire as well look at the, look at the amount of cows B's got under here as well and these archers that he's got here they seem like they're going to be able to clean this up anyway and pink is going to be put under so much pressure here with his economy being scattered out all over the map like this pink just really struggling at the moment and his knights are going to be cleaned up as well and B up to 60 archers still going to be losing quite a few of them but it's all right He's cleaned up so much of the economy. We've got 66 villagers versus 60. And there it is. GG is going to get called. Pink realizes that the, the owner, only archer challenge from B is going to be too much. Wow, what a game we had there. B bringing out the archer only strategy. If you did enjoy this caster game, then please do feel free to leave a like. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.